This is the Row E Dear Jane EPP bag sort for the first bag inside of here. So we're going to open this up. And we have a booklet and some other stuff. So this is the booklet. It's got which blocks are modified and the cornerstone and lattices. So I'm going to stick that back in the bag for later. E1 through E6 bag, which is what we're going to sort on this video. And the E7 through E13 bag is what we're going to sort on the next video. So I'm going to set this cornerstones and lattices and the E7 through 13 bag back in this bag. And then we have one, two, three, four, four and a half inch squares. The four and a half inch squares will be for specific blocks that they will mention in the back on the notes. So I'm gonna turn right back there now and it says which ones it's gonna be used for. I will take my Sharpie and mark that right now. So I've got one for E1, which goes with this bag, and then E10, 11, and 13 are gonna go with the other bag. I'm still gonna label them and I'm gonna stick them back in the bag because then I've done it already. And then E13. All right, so I will stick these back in the bag. So now I'm going to set this over here-ish, doesn't matter, set it aside for now. And I'm going to open up my booklet and we're going to see which blocks are modified. So we're going to mark these in the book. So we've got E4, I'm going to go to my book here and I've got my book spiral bound. So this is my Dear Jane book open to page with E1 on it. And so E4 is modified. And I've done some of these before, so I've gone through and marked these. So E4, and then the next one in here is E5 and 6. So E5 and E6. E7 and E9. E7 and E9. E8, so they're out of order, 7, 9, and then E8. So I'm going to go back to E8 and mark that it's modified. And then E13. E13. So those are what's in the book is modified. When we get to those blocks, I will go to the booklet to lay out my pieces. So... In the meantime, we're going to get started with E1. So I've got E1, I've got this block. So we already know that that is for E1. And then I'm going to dump out my bag. We're going to see what we got in here for pieces. And we need big football pieces. We've got little football pieces here too. So we're going to have a lot of these footballs. So as I pull these out, if I pull one out, I'm going to just put footballs here and see about different sizes. Okay, lots of little pieces. So there's a big square. And as I set these out, I'm going to group them by similar sizes, uh, similar shapes, excuse me. Just so that when I get to the next round, I can sort of find or know where to look for these pieces. So I've got um, triangles that are weird shaped. And I have right triangles. Let's see, there's a right triangle. I might just throw all these in the same. And these are right triangles that have the same size on each side. So as I go through here, I'm looking for these footballs. So let me sort through here and get these. So I found six footballs total. So I've got ones that are this size and ones that are this size. I have two of these and four of these, so logic dictates that these big ones are for this one and the little one, or the smaller ones, are for this one. Footballs have different math than the math that was used to design the blocks, so they may not be the same size. As long as they are the same size to each other, the block will not look bad. 
but it just looks like it doesn't line up with the book correctly and that's fine because you're gonna center this on this four and a half inch block and these are all the same size to themselves so they're they're the mirror image or exactly the same cuts however you want to say that so these are all lined up to each other and they they were for this block so let me put these out here so I can write on them and then this is the block and in the examples the cream color is the background so the footballs are background so we have E1 on every one of these and then background I don't put a dot on and on focus fabric blocks I put a dot on so that when I go to do my block prep I know which piece goes with which color without having to open up the book again so I can just open up the baggie so that's it for E1 I'm going to put this in a baggie I have my labels and I'm going to put E1 on this and I stick all these into a sandwich size bag because they fit the Dear Jane blocks very nicely and set this aside and I will move on to E2. So now for E2 we have the other two footballs that are larger than these and we have a big background square which there's only one option is this one <clears throat> and then there's four tiny squares for the edge and four rectangle pieces so let me find all of those and lay them out as I'm laying these out I'm noticing that there's some kind of a bend this one specifically has a bend to it I have lived in a humid area and I've had these for a bit and I'm not sure if they've been humid or not or if they got bent or whatever but anyway I'm gonna make the bend go this way so the up the uphill is on the top what this does is it keeps my pieces in place better so if you run into this with yours just you know do it that way because it just makes it easier to lay out and it doesn't matter which side is up really but that way you're not catching what happens if you do it the other way is the edges are catch they uh, stick up and as you go to lay out your pieces they tend to catch on your fingers and on your sleeve and stuff like that as many ba as many of these as I've sorted at this point I've done it I've done it screwed it up and make fixed it and all that kind of thing so my recommendation you don't have to do it this way my recommendation is to make the bend go on the uphill so the edges are down and the middle is up okay so I have my E2 pieces laid out and I mark all of them with uh, E2 so now I've labeled all of my E2 pieces and I'm gonna mark my focus fabric so I have focus fabric on both of the footballs and then on the big rectangles on the edge and so the rest of these will go in the bag. When we get to block assembly, we will cover how to take the papers out of this because you end up with three layers of paper. But yes, it is what it looks like and there's a way to fix around it. But we will worry about that when we get to block assembly. So I'm gonna bag this up, put it in my E2 bag and move on to the next block. Now we're on to E3, and E3 has triangles and rectangles. So it's just a matter of being able to find the right sizes. The rectangles, I only have one size available for these. <clears throat> so there's four of those total. And then the triangles, I'm gonna have to go through my piles. Now this is the correct size. And I tend to build from this side over because I'm right-handed and that way when I put my hand down I'm not pushing them so <clears throat> and then a matter of finding the other ones for the corners obviously not those and so those are for this 
So I will go through and find all of these rectangles and triangles and lay them out. And what I will do is I will take the one that I find that matches and match the rest of them up to that because that's an easier indicator for me. Now I've got all the pieces laid out for my E3 block and I will go through and label each piece. Whoops. Maybe if my marker works. And E3. Now that all my blocks are labeled, I'm going to mark my focus fabric pieces and I've got a little pinwheel in here. So we're going to mark one, two, three, four, every other one. <clears throat> and, the and the triangles are facing the same or pointing in the same direction. And then the inside triangle of the of these square sections. So this one, this one, this one, and this one, and the rest of them are background. If you have a directional fabric, now's the time to determine what kind of uh, pattern you want. If you want to have it starbursting from the center, if you want to have it all lined up together, you're going to take a pen and mark your directional so that when you lay these back out, you don't have to put the, open up the book and put them back where they were. Uh, you can just have your arrows and that way you know which piece goes in which direction so that you can lay them on the fabric appropriately. So I don't have a directional fabric for this colorway of my Dear Jane, so I don't have to mark any of my directionals. I'm going to get my E3 square and my sandwich baggie and stick my pieces in there and move on to the next block. Next block is E4 and E4 is a modified block. I'm going to go back to the booklet and open it up to E4 and I'm going to take this page out because it's easier to deal with one sheet of paper and you can open it flat if you wish. If you don't want to, I'm going to push this crease down so it's less dimensional. So we're going to deal with this diagram because that's what the pieces were cut to. So we've got this piece that clearly goes in the center here and then there's four pieces that are shaped like this that are for the sides and they're mirror images so you're going to want to make sure that I mean it's easier to lay them out like this but this is why we, we mark them so that you don't accidentally flip them one way or the other that's what the uh, notation is about and then I'm going to go through and I've got four right angle triangles that are not equal and two kite pieces. So the kite pieces are right here and those go in the corners but the triangles also have to be you know if you don't mark them they're mirror images as well and I believe they're these here. Yeah so if I take this triangle as it is and not flip it over and try to put it here this corner has to go here but it's not going to fit. So if you don't mark your pieces, you could potentially end up with one the wrong direction. So that's why we lay these out and write on them. So I'm going to lay all these out so I can have them in place. So I got my E4 pieces laid out and now I'm going to mark them as before with my E4. So my E4 is now marked and I'm going to mark my focus fabric. Let me move this so I can see the block. So the, the big center diamond is going to be focus fabric and these triangles on the outside corner, not the kite pieces. So just the triangles are my directional or are my focus fabric. Mark for directional at this point if you have a directional fabric and I'm going to bag this up and move on to the next block. Next we are up to E5. E5 is this little, well, they call it rising sun, and that's exactly what it looks like. It is a modified block. So we're going to go to the booklet. On the other side of E4, because I pulled out that paper, is E5. So I'm going to just open it up and crease it. Now, there's a circle, okay, obviously for the center. And then there's bunches of these little 
triangles with sharp edges. And we will deal with the actual sharp edges, but for now, they're basically gonna meet like this in the center with the circle over them. So this is also a situation where you wanna make sure that they're in the right place because this has a right angle and goes down here or it'll flip over to go here. But again, with the humidity, I'm gonna put them a specific way if I can. So let me get these, let me get these laid out and find them all in this pile. So I've got all of my E5 pieces laid out and I've made this one before and I had a lot of issues with this center, obviously. There's a lot of fabric that goes into the center and then what happens is, as you can see with this picture, basically this goes over and you applique this on to the middle. Well, then why do I have to worry about these center pieces? So what I ended up doing, and I'm going to do now, uh, because I want to do it before I put fabric on it, I'm going to take scissors, and I'm actually, before I take scissors, I'm going to mark, you can see this line in here. I'm going to mark where this is. So if this one's at the edge here, this one is here. So you want to not, the idea is to not cut that far, but I am going to cut the points off because it makes assembly a lot easier. So I'm going to go around and just roughly put where these are. Okay, so it's not perfect, but you get the idea. I do not want to go past this point. This is where the edge is, and I need an edge to applique to. So I want at least a quarter of an inch of fabric here, if not more. And I usually like to use three eighths or a half an inch even. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each piece and I'm going to snip the tip. And I'm going to just, just snip the little bit of the tip. Because you can't put material back. You can always take more off. Well, what that's going to do is when I go to make this block, I can then baste around the edge and not have this mass of fabric in the center. So I'm going to go around and snip all these tips. Okay, so I've nipped in the tips off of this so I have an open circle. And there's a way to handle the fabric from here that's going to be a lot easier that we will cover in block assembly but this is gonna eventually be covered by this. But now I'm gonna mark my uh, pieces so that I know which side is the back. So we have E5 on each one of these. So I've marked all my E5s and these are the little tips. So I'm gonna throw these away. And I'm gonna mark my <clears throat> my focus fabric. The center is focus fabric and really it doesn't matter which one you start with as long as every other one is focus fabric. So I'm going to start with this one and so focus, background, focus, back, focus, 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 focus. So every other one on this is a focus fabric. Now when I did this originally I had a stripe and I did it as a starburst from the center. So every stripe went along the ray and so I put an arrow on each one to indicate that when I went to go lay it out but I have blenders for this so I don't have to worry about that but if you have a directional now's the time to mark it I'm going to bag this up and go on to the last block of this bag we're up to the last block for this bag is the E6 and it is a modified block so I'm going to go to the book and the difference is here, they've eliminated this bit and made it into a quarter square center and taken these to the edge. So we're going to use this uh, paper so that we have our proportions correct when we lay out our blocks. So I'm going to have squares and rectangles surrounding the center. I'm going to have a big square in the center with the triangles that are going to probably be applique on top. 
and I have four big triangles on the corners with squares applique on those. And so I will get, so this is the corner squares, which needs to start up here, actually. And then this is the applique squares. So I'm going to set these actually up here so they're out of the way. So I want to get these pieces all laid out. Okay, so I've got my pieces I'm laying out for this. My center piece is all a bunch of triangles. I thought it was a big square with this applique on, but it's not. It's a bunch of little triangles, which is fine. So I will, they're all the same size in theory, so I will lay these out since they're the only things left in the bag. So I've got my pieces laid out, and now I'm going to label them E6. So I've got my pieces labeled E6. Now I'm going to label my focus fabrics. So all these little squares that get applicated onto the triangles are focus fabric. So they each get a dot. And then these rectangles here our focus fabrics. So these are background. And then in the center, <clears throat> the center has this is focus fabric and then this little tiny, but we eliminated the little tiny. So what I'm going to do, and you can make up, you can do what you want in this case. I am going to do those two, but I'm going to do the others on the outside as well. So I've got these two here and then these two in the corner. So then actually this is going to connect. So that's going to have a nice little effect. That's going to make it look a little different. If you've got directional fabric, now is the time to label it. I'm going to bag this one up and this is the last block of the row E bag one bag sort for the Dear Jane EPP kit. <laughs> 